Shakil Shabir, Member of Parliament for Kisumu East. Welcome to the JSO interview. Thank you, John. Thank you. Might I start by asking whether you see yourself primarily as a South Asian minority politician? No, John, I don't see myself as a South Asian minority politician. I see myself as a politician of Luo Nyanza, uh, one who was born in the Asian community uh, with a different uh, skin, uh, but I've been brought up in the Luo community. I know Luo culture, and I feel that uh, um, the opportunity that was granted to me to lead um, or to, to give service back to the Kisumu people first as the mayor and as, a, as an MP is probably the highest honor I can get. Take us back uh, in family history for just mm. a wee bit. Uh, what generation Kenyan might you be? I'm a third generation Kenyan or, or actually uh, by, by birth second generation. My grandfather came here in 1918 on a Dow uh, working for the British, uh, with the Kenyan Uganda Railway. Uh, he moved along at the highest position they could ever get was assistant um, station master. Um, he was, and after my father was born here in Nairobi, uh, I was born in Kisumu and my children are born in Kenya. So we are actually coming on to the fourth generation. We've been here nearly 90 something years. Right. I, you start off being, as you suggested, mayor of Kisumu mm. for three years before now, ending in the year 2004. And thereafter, you decide to go into hard-nosed, not pu public administration as such, mm. but uh, real politics, so to speak. Mm. But you do so under the banner of the Orange Democratic Movement within the Cord Coalition. Mm -hmm. Do you go into Parliament, therefore, as a very unsatisfied, unhappy, disgruntled politician? Because you didn't win. No, we didn't win. We were hoping that we would have had majority and uh, obviously the plan of the court coalition was to win. Uh, our mathematics gave us the impression that we would win. Uh, obviously, there are certain dynamics that perhaps um, are not um, allowed for. And I think the next time we do this in 2017, we will do what Cassius Clay or Muhammad Ali said. If the referee is biased, you go for a knockout. And I think that's what we'll be looking for in our, polit our party politics next year. So, um, uh, take it, taken, which makes, again, you are a rudderless uh, coalition in the sense that Raila Odinga isn't part of the political mix, mainstream political mix. You're leaderless. You he was there as the, as the Prime Minister in the last government. Uh, rudderless as a party, no. In, in government, we are not in government. We are opposition, so we are not rudderless. We, are rud we have a very good rudder as an opposition party to make sure that this Kenya that we have lived in and this country of ours has opposition politics and we want to develop opposition politics. Remember, there has been no opposition politics since 1965. So I think this is the chance that we have to, to bequeath to the Kenyan country of ours what opposition politics should do. Uh, but again, uh, we're early days yet, but, uh, and we've had other guests on this, uh, on this forum. It seems to me that your idea of opposition politics is to disagree with every single initiative suggested by the government. No, True? No. no, absolutely not. I'll give you, you, to be, you have to be critical I'll give you an example. Uh, the, the very recent example is that uh, members of the Cord Coalition are the protectors of the death of devolution, which is highly challenged. We've had somebody from the Jubilee Coalition on this program say that devolution is catered for, the president is all for, but Rilo Dinger from the sidelines is saying, let's protect devolution. Just I, being I, a, maybe, maybe just being a spoil sport. Mm. No, no, I think devolution must be protected at each level. Uh, Rilo Dinger has suffered for devolution. So have many of us. <clears throat> so have many of us. Perhaps. His Excellency the President has not, had, has, not, uh, has not been tear gassed the way we have since 1992. But that doesn't mean for one moment, I mean Ruto has the Deputy President. So let's not for one minute think that devolution is our baby of opposition or their baby 
as parliament, uh, as uh, government. The uh, Jubilee coalition are in government. So, the idea is, I do not think, I really do in my heart of heart think that there is nobody who wishes to kill off devolution. Nobody. It's just the, the route some of them may want to take may not be the same. And that's the way human big nature is. And I feel that anybody who feels that they're going to come and kill devolution is 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 in a is you, in, you, in his you, own you, world. You, you may be, as a grouping, be about to kill devolution just in the nation a notion of the perks that you want to attach to your jobs. I mean, the the discourse for the last month or so has been about terms and conditions, car loans for five million, presidential offices for seven hundred million. These huge sums of, or billion, I should be using billion in fact, mm. sums of money that the man in the street whom you profess to represent mm. can't even contemplate. Ab absolutely, that's right. Right, that's so, right. so like th the this is... Like the jet which is gone, so, so the hustler jet you call and other right. things. Right, well I'll, I'll go back and ask you mm. with respect, what makes the Cord Coalition, if you had run on the Jubilee ticket, is it so much to say that your pursuit for power and leadership would have been sufficient unto itself? There aren't, is it, it isn't an issue-based disagreement. It's an agreement in Kenyan politics about the exercise of power and the dealing with money. Yes. Who pulls the purse strings? Well, actually, you know the fact of the issue is nobody, nobody is going to work for nothing except politicians. We want to be given, we want to be taught that we are going to do work the best we can. Now, the issue of money, it is not only the politicians who, not only the MPs, who have uh, asking for that money. You know, this is what we call, this is the way the press uh, relate to certain things. Actually, the, it's the MPs who are called the MPs. Well, what about the senators? They're in the same cap, they're in the same basket. It's the way you, you put this thing forward. The most important thing is, the most important thing is not salary. I did not come here as a member of parliament for salary. There are many of us who did not. And I, those ones who, who did come for salary, they're the wrong leaders for this country. But let them prove themselves. Well, they seem to be a majority because no, they no, fought, let them they prove. Fought, uh, there, there was never a call from those who were the so-called good politicians to say to their rest, you know, you can have a sort of classroom schoolboy, schoolgirl riot and everybody will say, you know, let's listen to Mr. Shabir and what he's saying. Why did you guys say no. uh, we ought to be content? Why wasn't there movement within Parliament? There was actually in the 10th Parliament, I was no. one of the four. No, but we're, we're talking about the 11th. Uh, so let, let's let me the start. Past. In the 10th Parliament, when they passed that, that ridiculous, uh, that ridiculous uh, bill that was going to increase our salaries to I don't know what, there were four or five of us, including Martha Karua, myself, Mili, Adyambo, and uh, Shabesh, and others. We said no. We went to the handset. But you weren't, but you weren't we a were, majority. We weren't in a majority. Otherwise, your view would have prevailed. We, were, we weren't you didn't. a majority. This time, as you understand, we were not even given time to speak. But you will notice one thing, as members of, members of the citizens of Kenya will know. You could have listened. You, if you had not said, if the people did not know that Dwale was from uh, Code Coalition and uh, Madiwa was from uh, um, Code the message that they came out was the same. So what happens is when it comes to the issue of money, there seems to be no division on, on what is called uh, uh, policies of uh, opposition or on government. So you're saying in a very uh, elaborate way that um, everybody's reading from the same page within parliament. Uh, apparently, you, uh, Initially course. you said that you'd, you'd be part of a vibrant opposition. But we are. Now you're arguing that everybody mm. speaks from the same voice and one in can't res in respect, in respect of this stomach, right. in respect of stomach, let's be very frank. Right. I think we have to get out of this uh, Maslow human uh, desire of needs, as you know. We are not in that situation where we are, go we are going for the ultimate, where we, our, our background is, is safe. Uh, let's say if tomorrow I, I was not a member of parliament, at least I know I have the qualifications, I have the backup, I have the investments, I have everything that keep me going and give me my, my little bit of money. Uh, some of them see this as a step to riches. And unfortunately, this is something that the citizens will want to work on. And the next time the voters come in, there will be a little, there got to be much, much more clearer. 
But let me tell you, some people who were reverends before in, in the top of um, civil society, who are right now, and they are the same people who were in civil society before saying that salary should not be reduced, should not be increased, should be reduced, are the same people now supporting. Right. I don't want to give you examples, but they but, are there. But, 